there are over one billion cameras deployed globally on a very simple mission that is usually not very successful, and it's to improve the security. We do not notice these little guys hanging on the wall or under the rooftop till the moment we are not directly involved in some sort of security incident. And only then we realize that that low quality short video footage might be the last thing that can help us out of the misery. CCTVs and cameras deployed within this network had to be traditionally guarded and monitored by army of people in order to provide a meaningful value for security. There is also very little correlation between the number of cameras and the security or crime rate itself. Main reason for such is very simple. There is a huge potential of unused data generated by these devices, and we may say these cameras are simply dumb. Therefore, back in 2018, we have introduced our first version of SmartFace, which was back then pretty much the face recognition algorithm embedded within the robust API. And our partners, you system integrators, use this face recognition platform to deliver projects for public security, border control, universities, campuses, stadiums, gyms, many others. We learned a lot over these challenging years from our partners. Not only that every project is very special, but also the conditions our partners are facing in reality are very challenging. And we've taken this feedback very seriously, and we reworked the smart face completely from the ground up. And I'm very happy I was part of this journey. And today, we can introduce the smart face version 5, which together with the smart face embedded can make every camera smart. And every camera can become a powerful tool that can help to build preemptive and proactive security. When we talk about the preemptive security, our mission is simply to minimize the crime or incident before they really happen. And it requires to have a definitely robust and flexible, scalable architecture, because one day you may have a need to deploy your technology centrally, another day in the cloud, or on the edge. But most probably, it's going to be the combination of all of these. Our partners have to work with a large watch list and instant notifications. And also, they need to have uh, tools for rapid search and offline video investigation. And let's talk a little bit more now about what does it mean truly scalable edge to cloud architecture. Here is an example of a small building we all know very well, Smart Airport. And in order to provide a high level of security that is needed for an airport, you need to handle the fact that you need to deploy a large number of cameras. One video stream is producing in HD quality approximately 4 megabits per second. And that is perfectly OK if you have one, two, maybe five cameras. But to manage the airport, you will need hundreds of them. And then you may find out that your technology and your network have some limits. Therefore, we came up with a simple idea. What about to offload the heavy job that happens directly on the server, including video decoding, face detection, possibly template extraction, as well as maybe matching, from the central server directly to the edge or to the smart camera? And with this approach, we can save a lot of infrastructure, as well as the network, due to the fact that the number of data decreased significantly. And the same also happens, and it's clearly visible, especially in the cases where we need to deploy a lot of cameras. The economy of scale works perfectly here. And with this unique, scalable edge-to-cloud architecture, we allow our partners 
to utilize not only traditional tools like uh, servers, PCs, but they can also bring the tablets, smartphones, smart glasses, and many other devices. I'm inviting you to check to our smart face station. Regarding the notification and the watch list, especially when we discuss the public security, it's required that we have to process simultaneously multiple video streams, multiple faces in one, in one stream, and provide the identity identification pretty much within the milliseconds or instantly. Of course, it's important you don't want to be overkilled with too many details and data that are not relevant to you. Therefore, each security officer can choose what kind of notifications he or she would like to see. I can choose which cameras I would like to see, which define my sector, so I'm not distracted with the notifications that does not belong to my duty. And of course, we are moving. We are adding more modalities, as Peter already introduced. We have also now human body detection, which is very useful in the areas which cannot be fully monitored by the cameras. We understand the fact that you cannot see everything and everywhere. But if you spot the movement, maybe in the great distance, you can still trigger your security to do the appropriate action. And last but not least, is we understand that the technology and the situations not, are not ideal. It's very difficult to have a camera in the ideal position. And also users are usually wearing a sunglasses, hats, of course, face mask. And this is a very typical use case. And we still have to provide 100% information about the user identity. All of these features I just mentioned are very useful in order to create your custom strategy. As I mentioned a little while ago, that means that the security officer number one can monitor area number one. Officer number two can monitor area number two because you can easily define the area by the camera IDs. Regarding the public security and preemptive security, when some incident or crime happens, you need to act very, very fast. That means, and let's consider again the airport or some sort of shopping mall, try to think about browsing last three days and looking for the individual where you know only maybe it was a man around the 40s, maybe with the black hair. That's the, all the inputs you may have. And thanks to our history preview, you can quickly browse, trim down and filter the relevant metadata that can help you to find a person of interest. Once you get here, you may have an image of the suspect or you may have an external image from different resources. And then you can use a face search and again, you can search hundreds of thousands or million records instantly to see appearance of the user across the time, across the areas, how was he or she moving around your, around your place. And it's not only like situation like every cameras are smart, we are analyzing everything, all the data are waiting on a server for us to, the, to do the analysis. Simply it requires very quickly to analyze also various offline video footages you might have from the place of the incident, maybe from the access point cameras or uh, from ATMs or somebody is doing some video. And thanks to our rapid in video investigation feature, you can upload multiple vi offline video footages, process them in parallel, see all of the detected faces, merge them into one watch list, and do the operation as I introduced a little while ago. That means a search, filtering, whatever is needed. Before I jump to the second part of my presentation, I would like to also remind ourselves, like our colleague did on the beginning, the crazy years we've been through, especially the last three years, the pandemic years. Many people were locked in a home office for a pretty long time. And after maybe two, three years working from the home office, many people may start to think that this is a new normal. This is how we're gonna work forever. On the other side, we saw businesses 
businesses were facing the loss of productivity, company values and engagement. And thanks God, home office forever is not a new trend. Instead, we see that the new hybrid model that combines remote work together with the home work is becoming the winner. And it's very well accepted not only by employees, but also by employers. In order to deploy such project for seamless security and access control, we have introduced the smart face with its features that are helping to our partners to achieve and overcome these challenges. First, we have to say that the purpose of the offices, especially after the pandemic, has changed. It's becoming more a place for creativity, brainstormings, meetings, networking. And of course, the expectations are changing of the people they're supposed to come there. They expect much nicer, bigger, wider areas. Everything should be a touchless, contactless, you know, the situations. I don't want to touch that button, you know, you rather choose your elbow. And simply, users expect that the access control management will reflect these expectations. On the other side, such expectations create new headaches for the security and for the operations. Not only in terms that once your offices are more open, it can bring more challenges to guard it and to fight access violations or tailgating. Also, we don't know when the next pandemic is coming, what's gonna happen with the restrictions or lockdowns. But we need to keep thinking about that. Seamless access control has many specifics. And we have prepared a smart face for our partners in order to support these challenges to implement the seamless experience, which is a crucial. Seamless experience means I just go, I don't stop, I don't care about any access point, I do not interact with any system. And for that, we have developed the watchlist Auto Learn. Of course, it's expected that uh, not everywhere can be a receptionist or the security. Many areas are simply not monitored, but you want to have the same experience as well. You want to provide your personnel, your staff, your visitors, your contractors, also very nice solutions for enrollment. And of course, you don't want to replace whole infrastructure you have already in your company just because to add a new modality. Now, let's talk a little bit more about what does it mean a truly seamless access control. As I mentioned, seamless means that there is or there is not an access point. It can be a turnstile, it can be a speed gate. And we don't want to hustle the user by stopping, having a look to the camera, maybe confirming something. This is not what we are focusing on. We're focusing on areas that are either not guarded directly anyhow with the turnstiles, speed gates, or if they are, they simply need to provide very nice and seamless experience. And in order to achieve such state, our R&D helped us significantly with so-called Watchlist Auto Learn. Watchlist Auto Learn is a beautiful feature we found out very useful during the pandemic, where all of us need to wear a face masks, which of course is not very friendly with the way how the algorithms were built before because you don't see a, many par a large part of the face, so the facial feature points are not there, and your template is not that robust. With, the, with this watch list auto learn, we are picking each day very different appearance of your face, and if there is a match, we are adding this face, the facial template generated, to the master watch list, master facial template, and this is helping us to achieve tremendous accuracy within a milliseconds. That's exactly what we need from the moment we spot the face till the user goes two or three meters to the access point. And what happens meanwhile is we, we detect the face, we extract the face template, we send it for matching, we receive information about the user, then we check with the access control system if this user belongs to the system. If yes, then we send a command to the access point 
to open or to leave it closed. In order to deploy the technology on various places, various sites, you cannot have everywhere a personal. Of course, using a RFID card, which is a typical method, is not, al is not always very safe. I can lose it, somebody can find it, quickly delegate. And our passive liveness check is a real game changer. We will have a demo tomorrow, so you are very welcome. And it's helping us to deploy access control pretty much anywhere. It's a passive liveness check, so we do not ask user for any action. You do not need to apply any special hardware, 3D sensor, infrared sensor whatsoever. It just works with your regular CCTV or smart camera. And on top of that, we also provide to our partners delivering the projects for access control, powerful tool set of features they will find very useful because they can help them to build a system according to the requirements of their clients. First of all, at the beginning, you need to register your users. Not everybody has full database of perfectly ICAO shaped images. You need to enroll the users. Then you have contractors, visitors, external workers. And with our SDK, which is built on top of the digital onboarding toolkit, we have implemented also option to provide GDPR consent, which is very important because we cannot just enroll everybody we want. And seamlessly follow the action. I can just receive the link, do the selfie, maybe scan my ID if it's needed. So it can be the HR enrollment and straight away also the enrollment to the access control system. When I do the presentations for access controls, I'm the most proud, especially for this piece of software, which is called Access Controller. This is the brain behind our security. It filters the messages that are being produced by the smart face, and it can help to achieve the security access strategy you will choose. We can, thanks to this Access Controller, we always measure or we can set how far the user is supposed to be in order to be detected because you don't want to catch the face too early and open the door. You don't know if the user is actually going to the, to the access. So this is helping us to set, for example, the user should be approximately three meters. His vector direction should be towards the speed gate. We want to make sure that the user is wearing a face mask. And once I pass the access point, I want to make sure that if I turn my head within a five seconds, the doors will not open again. All of such logic can be easily set through our access controller, and the options are pretty much unlimited. So if the policy of your company requires that you need to wear a face mask, we don't let the user to get in without the face mask. If somebody will try to break your access with a high quality plastic mask, if you have tested ever the liveness check, you know that usually first, second, fifth, tenth attempt is not successful. Users must be smart. They need to find the weak spot of the neural network. But we have developed so-called anti-hammering system, which allows our partners to set the logic that, for example, I will try to spoof once, twice, and I'm locked out. I can then spoof next day without any success. And all of those maybe tiny features together can really build a very robust access control system which doesn't have to be monitored by human beings. In order to complement the overall offering, we have also developed a very nice access control station, which is a simple application, of course, responsive design, like whole smart face application also for the security. And it generates the messages either positive or the negative, if somebody is spoofing, somebody is not identified, and so on. So it's very useful. We don't want to overkill the users, the security personnel, the receptionists with another screen, another tons of messages. We just display the relevant things for the organization. And of course, you also need to have a very often the visual feedback for the users. Yeah, if I am entering somewhere and the turnstile simply does not open, 
I want to know why. For example, we can say the message, put your mask on. For example, there is too many people in the building and according to some guidances, there is a limit. And you can use any kind of device, laptop, tablet, custom tablet, iPad, Android, to generate the message according to your needs. You can also display the different notifications. For example, welcome Robert, do not, finish, do not forget to finish your you know, security test, whatever is mandatory <laughs> within the work. And the last feature I would like to introduce today is a cloud matcher, which is a very beautiful feature and a way of deployment of the technology, especially for the areas where it doesn't make a sense to deploy servers, smart cameras. It can be temporary. It can be a music festival, it can be a banquet, it can be one even like this. And very simply, we can use any kind of device to do the heavy job. For example, on my smartphone, I can process, I can process the face detection. Once I detect the face, I can send it to the cloud matcher that sits in my infrastructure or in the cloud and receive the notification about the user's identity again instantly. And as you can see on this last image, this is from the reality, and I would say this is the coolest implementations I have ever seen of our technology from our partners, KAUST, from Saudi Arabia. They are using the smart glasses for processing the video streams. Once they detect the face, they send it to the cloud matcher for the information who is the user. Therefore, we are like, allowed to listen to feedback from our partners in order to build a technology that supports what they need. This was my last slide. Thank you very much for your attention, and I'm ready for your questions. Thank you, Robert. This was incredibly interesting. Thank you. So uh, you said that every camera could be a smart camera. That sounds almost like No Child Left Behind initiative. Uh, tell me a little bit about how that works. How do you train the cameras? How, what happens with uh, my camera? I would say we can find many, many correlations. I have uh, two little kids, yeah, like toddlers. And uh, making camera smart, it's uh, pretty much like growing up your kid. Yeah, you start pretty much from the point zero, you start to, you know, you start to study, you start to maybe do some engineering, then you are first happy with the first results until you realize it's completely not okay. So it's never ending job, it's never ending job, it's always try and fail, try and fail, till we get to the moment, okay, we can detect the phase within the seven milliseconds, and then we realize, oh, it can be faster, it can be much faster. So uh, it's a never ending process, and thanks to our engineering team and SDK team, we made it. We made it and uh, we are very happy that now we support pretty much majority of smart cameras or thanks to the edge devices, we can make every camera you see hanging around smart. So every time uh, hardware producers come up with a new camera, you have a little party in the office because it starts all over again, right? You start yeah. with a new device. Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna challenge you now a little because you had a wonderful video about how people are coming through the gates and your employees are very compliant. They walk two meters behind each other. So, you know, that works nice. But what about us women who go to restroom in tribes? There's five of us walking together what would the door do? I would cancel the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, I'm just kidding. Well, there can be always, we will put you, we will streamline you. We are testing our technology, especially in areas where we are very heavy traffic. This is uh, very useful, yeah? For very heavy traffic, we recommend just remove that turnstile because we do not have issue with our technology to process within milliseconds. Very often we see the limits of the hardware itself. It simply, it's not possible that it will open that fast. Right. So if you have a factory where 1,000 people needs to get to the shift, within 10 minutes, we recommend remove that piece of hardware, and only you will receive notification that the user does not belong to the organization. You can take him on a site and maybe verify manually. Nice. That's really nice. 
Okay, good. You said uh, that every camera can be a smart camera. So you're saying there's no minimum hardware requirement at all, like literally every camera? Literally every camera. If the camera is not powerful enough, we can make it powerful. We can add some edge device to the camera. So you offload exactly. kind of the operations on the on exactly. the chip, right? So that's how it works. Okay, good. If you guys have any questions, then definitely do go on Slido um, and ask those questions. Um, um, good. So we're opening the last chapter. We're going to see some of the application of your technology in practice. Uh, we're going to uh, talk to the speakers and see if it really all works so smart as you say, but we're going to test it out. Uh, thank <laughs> thank you, you so much, Robert. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you as well. I'm looking forward. Thank you.